Hey there, I decided to ask some question about School of Advanced Studies and their new program, Experimental Higher Education. This is a master degree. So uh, the two students agreed to participate in my interview. Uh, they have finished the first year and go into the second one. So let's ask them FQA question. So let's go. So thank you for coming. That's really good, great pleasure. Um, so. Jane, let's start with you. Tell me about yourself in brief. Um, okay, so where to start? Uh, my name is Evgenia. I'm a graduate of Central State University. I'm now I'm 23 years old. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in linguistics. Um, and well, currently I'm a second year um, student of MA XHG program in brief. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yaroslav, now it's your turn. Yeah, my name is Yaroslav Koshkin, and uh, actually what Jane has said is applicable for me also, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm also, uh, my bachelor degree is in linguistics, I'm also a second year of MA experimental education, and, but I'm more a rebellion guy, so to say, than Jane, <laughs> as one of our professors said about me. Mm, okay. And uh, Elsa, why did you choose uh, this master program? Um, I think that it is appropriate to say that it was maybe my personal vendetta because I was not really pleased with my education, I mean, with my bachelor's degree. I mean, as the mm. whole process and uh, SAS just it gave this uh, like an opportunity that I can change something and I applied. <laughs> okay, um, so it's your vendetta and uh, do you have More this feeling honest. that you're doing something great now, that you're changing the world, that you're changing the game in high education? Uh, right now, no. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that I will get this feeling in, in the future, it is possible, yes. Right now, I, I'm thinking about it like this, just a preparation for, for the game, for the real game. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jane, what about you? Why did you choose this master program? I think I can emphasize several reasons here. First of all, I have always been an active student at my university, at my alma mater, and I always, um, and I dedicated many projects and all presentations uh, towards, um, uh, well, dedicated to uh, changes in higher education system or uh, my, let's say, pain uh, about curriculum or something like that. Like that. Uh, and I always uh, try to organize several uh, well, different events um, at, at university. And, so, and uh, to some extent, I could see, I think, uh, the system from inside, I guess. And uh, maybe here we can see the correlation with uh, Eurosoft missions. Um, Eurosoft's mission, yeah. Uh, and well, but also, um, uh, but also because I wanted to try something new and something really experimental. Uh, and I really liked the program's description. Um, back then, in 2019, uh, one year before uh, entering the program, I read um, a book by um, Richard Feynman, um, a famous physician. Um, physicist, physicist, right? Sorry, my English is something is wrong with my English in July. Well, I would say sorry. sorry, not sorry. So it's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, there was. Um, and there was a phrase, um, uh, actually his citation, um, uh, that you need to try something new while you're applying to your uh, MA program. Um, so in order to, um, you know, escape from the easy breathing thing. Like that. So yeah, basically I wanted to try something really exciting and new and also a, a, a great advantage for me. Uh, of this program, I mean, was uh, 
as a fact that the program was in English and I really wanted to uh, continue my um, linguistic skills, which as you can see, mm -hmm. I'm not very so anymore. Uh, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now let's talk about the professors, advisor or manager of this program. Uh, what can you say about them? Jane? Uh, about the professors, well, about the stuff, yes, in general. Yeah, just stuff in general. Um, well, the first thing is, in my opinion, that everybody is extremely friendly, uh, starting from um, starting from the managers, I guess, because these were uh, first people. Um, I, I think they met or they communicated while applying to the program. Uh, uh, secondly, everybody is really helpful and um, ready to talk and discuss things and ready to help you with any questions, even if uh, these professors, this professor, for example, is not um, uh, is not teaching you currently, like in this uh, semester, in this quarter, uh, but still you can, uh, you can easily um, ask anything, basically. Um, yes. Uh, yeah, and all the first thing I would um, I would choose for description probably for all people at SAS, uh, not only professors but both professors, managers, and students. Uh, the people are very um, self determined probably, uh, and they um, set and set high goals and want to achieve them as well. And hard working in general. Yaroslav, mm -hmm. uh, do you have the same? Uh, idea about the professor and stuff in general, or maybe you have your own opinion about it? Uh, I have to say that uh, I think that I share a lot in common uh, with Jane. I think that uh, our staff professors, uh, administrators are very supportive people, are very open-minded, and I really love them. I uh, love them because they are cool. I mean, it is... Uh, from my point of view, it is very important uh, to be not only uh, the more knowledgeable one as they are actually, uh, but to be more of a, uh, I don't know how it would sound, supportive friend maybe. Mm -hmm. And uh, it makes the communication a lot easier. Uh, for example, we can use just a regular language. I mean, we can communicate face to face and it is not, I mean, it's not in something extraordinary. It is just ordinary routine. And I think it is great. Mm -hmm. So this means that it's possible to communicate with the professor outside the lecture and uh, get individual consultation. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it is one of the, ideas of SES, I would say, the open space and the open space of, uh, of open space works in both ways. So professors can communicate with students and students can communicate with professors. Uh, I mean, it's, it's allowed in, uh, in a core of institution, I would say. Okay. Jane, what do you think about that? Um. <laughs> Uh, yes, yes, absolutely. And also there is a special thing like professor in the box, uh, professor in the box hours. Uh, this is a time which professor, uh, well, uh, most of the professors, so maybe each of the professor, um, I'm not very sure about that, um, it has individual consultations, um, well, in a, in a box, as we call that, um, uh, for an hour. Uh, and so uh, uh, the time when everybody can uh, come um, and ask actually anything, because uh, that's about anything basically. So, I mean, um, any interesting question. Mm, okay, interesting. And uh, how many um, mates, students uh, are you starting with? Uh, so in the beginning, uh, there were 10 of us, right now, six. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got some 
uh, casual, I mean, losses, so to say. <laughs> so we lost four people. Okay, and uh, that's mean that you are very friendly. Yes. Uh, I would say that uh, our group mates are friendly, they are open minded, and they are, uh, they are one to communicate, uh, not only to uh, struggle and relieve pain <laughs> uh, to your group mate, but also to share the ideas. It is actually, uh, uh, I would say it is really good because uh, for the past year, uh, I mean, we have been, uh, everyone, uh, everyone have been very, very supportive, very friendly. And uh, for one year, uh, we came, I mean, as a strangers. And right now, uh, I, I won't say that we are friends, but uh, we are cohort. Yeah, maybe <laughs> like yeah. in a, like yeah. in a Rome legion. <laughs> yeah, I'm that's sure why that. I want to talk about a little bit a cohort. <laughs> um, so, what is a cohort according to South University? It's a good question. <laughs> uh, for, from my point of view, and for, for uh, from what I heard, uh, I mean, every person thinks of a cohort as a very different thing. Um, as, uh, as I understand it, and I already just mentioned it, it's a group of people who is ready to support you, who is ready to listen to you and help, of course. Yeah, it is the idea because uh, to be in a, uh, I mean, to work in uh, the field of higher education is a tough thing. And uh, you need people uh, who will help you doing so. So I think that cohort is means just helping uh, to your mate, so to say. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you feel right now that you have this cohort right now? That you are very supportive? I would say yeah. yes. Yeah, because uh, for me, also, cohort is uh, a group of people uh, who shares common interests. Um, besides, oh, yeah, and oh, yes, of course, support is a very important thing. And I guess, um, well, my group was one of the best things from this year. Um, and I, 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 I do think that we are a cohort now. Uh, because I feel like that we are kind of a, not secret society probably, <laughs> but in new society uh, for sure. Um, so yeah, that's good. You know, you have a feeling that uh, you have something that others either don't know or just not involved into that much. I mean, <laughs> you're just a new, um, a new block. Probably. Okay. <laughs> If, if to be very poetic, I would say that uh, being cohort is uh, sharing the pain and interests. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have your own jokes so that only you can understand? We have <laughs> only <them. laughs> I mean, you've got different interview and, for that. <laughs> and I insist that we must uh, create our own TikTok account or maybe our own uh, meme page on VK. Because Absolutely, yes, absolutely. And sometimes I feel really awkward when I actually try to um, make those jokes with my friends. <laughs> You're like, who is not involved in the higher education things and SAS in general. But, oh. <laughs> yeah, Jane and me uh, were collecting data about the jokes that, uh, <laughs> that are going on. Okay, good, good. Um, can you please tell me about your typical day, just to choose any and try to describe yourself. Can you please describe your typical day? Yeah, uh, my typical day starts with a awakening that sometimes not very pleasant thing to do because you understand that uh, the day is going to be really hard. And actually it is, it is going to be hard. So, uh, 
the typical day contains a lot of work, a lot of reading, uh, a lot of um, oh, so to say, just taking. To, to start with the beginning, for example, uh, I get up, I go to the uh, campus, and we have, for example, three or five hours where we are discussing something, or I don't know, just can you describe your typical day and when it ends? <laughs> when it ends. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, actually, I was doing an experiment uh, on myself. Uh, I was uh, I was getting uh, to institution at uh, nine a.m. and getting out at uh, nine or ten p.m. Uh, so I was for the whole day. I was uh, in the institution, and uh, the typical day was that I was uh, trying to find a place there to work. I was working on, I don't know, different projects, for example, or I was um, uh, reading some uh, materials that I need for the, uh, for the future lectures or uh, practice. Uh, then it was maybe one or two uh, classes in a day. Sometimes there was none. Uh, and when there was none, uh, I was uh, meeting people that I needed for my experiments, maybe, or that I needed uh, for my uh, preparation for studies. I mean, uh, there are, I would say, I cannot name uh, any day as a typical day, except the typical day contains a lot of work. That's it. Yeah, uh, there are a lot of uh, tasks uh, that you need to do and they're uh, very different mm -hmm. maybe you. that's the typical day when you do all the tasks <laughs> <laughs> you go to sleep and you think about that you cannot uh, you cannot fall asleep and you just <sighs> <laughs> okay you're just begging for mercy okay. thank you jane what about you well um i actually think that we when we are talking about affairs uh, we can uh, say that there is a typical day because every day is is different and unique. <laughs> and yes, trust me. Um, but okay, for example, um, as a common pattern, as I remember, well, I woke up at, uh, for example, 8 a.m. Uh, first thing, um, first thing for me was checking my Gmail. Um, uh, to see a new, um, to see new mails, and usually there are lots of them. <laughs> um, probably to respond to them, uh, to respond to them, or something like that. Uh, well, then uh, after that, uh, usually uh, I also read some um, articles which I didn't have a chance to <laughs> to read a day before. So, or at night or before night. So I try to do it in the morning um, before the classes. Uh, when I went to, when I attended classes, uh, well, either online or offline at the building. Um, and um, well, spend some time. Uh, after, we usually had, I guess, one or two classes a day, not, not more, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but after that, we spent, uh, well, okay, then I will talk about myself. Uh, I spent uh, a lot of time doing homework or other um, stuff like experiments, as you yourself mentioned, so my own things. Um, and um, I ended up my day like uh, in the evening, like um, at 5 or 6 p.m. Uh, and usually, um, and usually we went to dinner. We had dinner with uh, some of our group mates, uh, or probably all of us went out somewhere uh, and just came home, um, still continuing doing our thing, <laughs> still continue uh, to work. So does it mean that you can be even a freelancer or part-time job? I don't think, no. Uh, I think it's possible. 
uh, probably to some people, but for example, not for me, because uh, personally, for me, it requires a lot of time uh, to prepare even um, essay or something like that. So anyway, um, but for my um, more experienced groupmates, I think it was slightly mm -hmm. easier to combine more things together. I mean, some of them managed to um, give English classes, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so yeah, but not for me, for example. Mm, if I had a chance for uh, if I had a chance uh, to start this program again or something like that, I still don't think that I would have been able to um, to work. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so can you just name me the classroom activity that you have? I know that you mentioned about the essay. Um, what else do you do? Yeah, but essay is a typical kind of work, I would say. Um, Maybe presentation? A lot of presentations, yes, a lot of presentations, uh, debates, a lot of discussions. Probably each class we had um, discussions. We had traditional lectures, uh, but not so many. Um, yeah, also there were a lot of uh, group work activity. And uh, the main idea of this group work uh, was to uh, give us a lot of responsibility for what uh, we were doing. And uh, I cannot say that it's fully worked. <laughs> sometimes maybe it's kind of failed. Uh, but sometimes, I mean, for uh, some classes, there were more group work than, in, than individual work, actually. And it was kind of strange. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we also know that, sorry for interrupting, but maybe it's a really good one because uh, when you're trying to make so big experiments, <laughs> you can do it like individual. So you need a team. So no, that's the thing, the experiments were individual. <laughs> oh, <laughs> interesting. Yeah, but in the real world, of course, you cannot do experiment on your own. You need a team. And uh, the better team, the better for you. Um, and uh, do you know uh, how to build a team, so the principle, how to, uh, to choose the right person for your purposes to, to conduct experiments? Maybe you have discussed it with your professors or staff about this? I think yeah, I've touched upon it, but I'm not sure that, uh, but you know, we have uh, made a list of competences which uh, a true experimental or a mind must have or something like that. Uh, not really. Can you actually repeat your question? Uh, do you mean that uh, a person who is able to conduct experiments or uh, how to make a team? Yeah, a how team to university? make an efficient team. For example, you have a purpose to do something, to do some conduct experiment. And what? What I should do? Just ask any kind of person, would you like to join me? Or you have some principle how to build it, how to build a team, how to create. But do we have actually this chance? Uh, I repeat the word actually too many times. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, but uh, do we have this chance at traditional universities to choose people? <laughs> I, do, wow. I don't think that we have a. I don't think that we have a choice. The, other, uh, the question here is how to make people work with you and how to teach them. Um, I cannot fully agree with Jane, but in a way, yes. But you need to choose from a pool of the people that you get at, the, at your own university. Uh, from my point of view, the main idea, uh, how to build a team, uh, you need to remember two things. Uh, first one, uh, what these people can do for, for the project. Uh, what, do they, uh, what do they really can put into it? And uh, what contribution it would make for them 
of course, it is really important to understand because uh, if they do not understand why it is important for them also, they might be not really motivated. Uh, so this is maybe my rules. Maybe I just stole them from our professors. <laughs> I cannot really <laughs> <But> remember. <laughs> I have kind of, uh, I have slightly different opinions. I, will, I partially agree with your side because first of all, I think I, I also think that uh, we must know what um, strong side of each person of each team member is where he or she can contribute, right? Uh, can put most effort, can do that for that. For example, uh, I don't know, I um, I don't like communicating with people, so I would like, I, I would choose Yaroslav for that person to go to rector and talk to him, but I can do other things, like, right? So I don't know, make a plan of a project or something like that. So delegate um, your, your responsibilities is really important. Um, and um, yeah, um, but, but still, <laughs> I uh, I think that all these people uh, must have already have uh, a common purpose, a common motivation, let's say, of building a like, new environment in university. So work at interesting project. It's like it, it's itself. It's already an interesting thing to work on. So something like that. Okay. So but we it, have it, all it's these the question of motivation. <laughs> Yeah, it's it, just Yaroslav uh, has touched upon a topic of motivation and we can actually discuss it a lot <laughs> for a long time. Yeah, I know. So we have uh, only three minutes left. So uh, Yaroslav, can you please tell me uh, which experiments uh, are you trying to conduct or maybe you're working at? Just in brief. <laughs> um... Okay, so my experiments were uh, kind of radical, uh, <laughs> as they were, dis I mean, as the professors were describing them. Um, maybe the most interesting one was the last one, when I was uh, trying to change the uh, role of a student uh, at the university, not at the university, but at the institution. Uh, from my point of view, I was thinking that it is uh, actually a hot topic and it is really controversial thing. Uh, my experiment, to be honest, failed uh, because I was uh, uh, foolish to believe <laughs> that I understand the concept. Uh, but I was um, uh, really not paying attention about the stakeholders and not, I mean, not only about all the stakeholders, but the really main one, uh, our I mean, director of the institution. He was my, he should my main uh, priority, but I just, I just failed <laughs> to do analysis on that. Uh, but still the experiment was, uh, a, it was a decent experience uh, to you to understand how to run something very important and very controversial inside the institution. So I hope that the next time I will do a better job on analysis. <laughs> okay, uh, and Jean, what about you? Which experiments are you trying to conduct? Maybe you have participated in such kind of events. Uh, well, um, uh, I, just, I, I just first I just need to say that we have conducted, all of us have conducted four experiments in a year. Two, small, uh, two of them were small and two of them were, well, bigger. Uh, and speaking about the last one, the last experience I, uh, I did, uh, it was dedicated, to, in a nutshell, it was dedicated to, um, to the motivation topic, yes, by the way. So I, trying, I, 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 I was trying to check whether students, uh, whether uh, um, if our teachers, if professors, uh, and use information about students' motivation and students' satisfactory grade before their uh, beginning of the quarter, uh, whether this information could uh, help um, could help them in uh, strategic um, planning of the classes, uh, and yeah, how how this information uh, could have helped. Okay, thank you. We have only one minute left, so. <laughs> Thank you for this. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Thanks.
Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions about School of Advanced Studies or maybe about this new program, please leave your questions in the comments. I will collect all of them and we will have another one interview uh, close to the new year or maybe after new year.